it's always the same. Scorch gets countered. Scorch gets owned. Scorch is the worst Titan. But does it have to be this way? Believe it! That's right. I won't get anywhere if I don't believe in myself. Believe it! I'll show them. I'll show them all! When it comes to Scorch, there's no sugarcoating it. He's sadly one of the hardest and weakest titans in the game. With a niche kit and his slow speed, he truly struggles to outposition and outplay his opponents. Because of this, a lot of Scorch mains live for the moments when you get a bunch of enemies grouped up together and then... Out of all the other titans, no one comes close to Scorch's AoE destruction, and just looking at these clips alone, you wouldn't think that he's contender number one for the most underwhelming titan. See, when you pick Scorch, you're basically saying, Huh, meta? Viability? All I need to do is burn your face off. And while that's technically true, you're also saying that you can actually hit your shots and use your cooldowns effectively. But can you really do that? Well, that's the question your enemies are going to be thinking as they proceed to exploit every vulnerability you have, and oh boy, does Scorch have a lot of them. Fuck! But uh, we'll get to that later. I don't know what I'm doing! Ah! Shit! 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 Oh, Fuck me! Oh. Fuck me! Oh. Thermite Launcher Hitting your shots with this thing is the ultimate skill check for Scorch mains. Nice throw. It feels downright dirty if you hit it consistently, and you can also humble those silly pilots who think they can even get away with the disrespect of even trying to face you head on with their AT weapon. I swear to god, if you motherfuckers won't leave me alone, I will incinerate your entire bloodline. You're all fucking dead, and there won't be any ashes to bury you! Of course, the times when you do miss your shots, it can be real awkward when you're stuck there reloading while your opponent just kind of rips into you. And unfortunately, there's really nothing you can do about it except practice. But when it clicks, oh yeah, it feels real good. Also, this thing isn't that bad at dealing damage to titans either, and more often than not, you can catch cocky titans off guard with just how much damage it can actually do to them. With that, I tend to treat Scorch's launcher like Demo Man's grenade launcher from TF2. When I hit direct hits, I'm rewarded with more damage, and to maximize my efficiency, I'll use cover as much as I can while reloading, and I'll only peek while necessary. In the Timefall 2 sense, I guess you could say that Scorch is just a mildly obese North Star? Now, onto the ability you're probably most familiar with, introducing... Now we all know that Scorch is a walking war crime. With the shield though, it truly does feel like you're committing an unforgivable sin and you know you won't see the pearly gates of heaven. <laughs> Those moments where you completely catch a titan off guard and they have to sit there watching their life burn away right before them? It feels wrong. But... <laughs> Along with burning up any titans in your face, you can also burn pilots, projectiles, and the poor soldiers who just want to feed their families and go back home. Looking at the shield itself, you could probably say that it's one of the best abilities in the game. Oh, right. <coughs> now I get why they made Scorch an ogre class titan, but sometimes it feels like genuine bullshit when you get the drop on a guy, everything seems good, and then they dash twice. See ya, chump. I swear Scorch would be so busted if they gave him two dashes. And I get this is for balancing reasons, but let a pilot dream, am I right? In the end, you'll have to decide whether or not approaching your opponent is worth it or not by analyzing the situation. Are they where I exist? What are the possible escape routes? Did they use a dash with core recently? These are just some of the questions you have when you're a certified face melter. On the bright side, if you're running the Inferno Shield kit, an unaware legion with his gun shield up is usually a free kill. Besides committing war crimes, the fire shield has the more practical purpose of being used to mitigate damage while advancing and retreating. And in my humble opinion, it's a lot better to use a shield defensively like this instead of trying to melt titans, since there's less room for error, is more applicable in a general sense.
fired one. And incendiary trap. Ha ha fire. Now these two abilities are kind of self-explanatory. Firewall puts down a wall of fire, or the, uh, I guess a line of fire. And incendiary traps are gas canisters that will explode into fire once they're triggered by... More fire. Wow! When it comes to area denial, these two abilities will be your best friend. Now, there are two ways to best utilize them. You could be the Scorch that analyzes each minute detail of your opponent and calculates when and where to place your canisters and firewall at the most optimal time to surround their titan with flames, ensuring that you're already 20 steps ahead of them. <gasps> or you could be the Scorch that just says, fuck it, and throws everything at once. <laughs> Guess which one I am. <laughs> I think when it comes to the placement of these abilities, people tend to over-strategize and they end up holding their abilities for too long until it's too late. On the other hand, simply unleashing everything in one go isn't that great either since now half of your arsenal is on a cooldown. The key to playing Scorch in my opinion is being able to manage your resources while also being able to dish out moderate amounts of damage. Same call. And now I can finally talk about Scorch's most dopamine inducing ability, the Flame Core. Fun fact, if you didn't already know this, Scorch's core is the only one to be able to completely bypass the Titan's Doom state. Despite being the lowest damage core in the game, its true strength is revealed when you have a bunch of Titans grouped up together. But oh man, let me tell you, this core is a lot easier to mess up than you think. In Titanfall 2, there are a lot of things that cause me pain. Campers, Monarchs, losing your Titan because you were dumb and called it in a really bad spot. And right along with them is missing my flame core. Embarrassing! I swear, for some reason, Scorch's core just feels devastating to miss compared to other cores. I mean, it's probably due to the fact that missing a flame core is like charging up a really powerful key blast, only for it to miss or have no effect at all. It's just too emotional, man. And while we're on the subject of pain, let's talk about. If you remember what I said earlier in the video, Scorch is pretty much regarded as the worst titan in the game for a number of reasons. So you know what? Let's go through a couple of them. Number 1. You risk putting in more effort for less reward. If you've played even one game of Scorch, it's pretty apparent that yes, he does take skill. Nice. With a larger minimum knowledge threshold than other titans, he requires a lot more mechanical skill and know-how as a result. Does that mean he's bad? Hell no! Like in this game here, I popped off with a pretty high score. But these 200 plus score games are often rare when I play Scorch just because of how demanding his mechanics are compared to a titan like Tone. Number 2. Map Dependency This point kind of intersects with the last one. Scorch is very much map dependent. A Scorch on forward base Kodai is a lot less formidable than a Scorch on crash site due to just how much space there is to move. Of course, nobody's gonna stop you from playing Scorch on Homestead, but if you really want to excel in those maps, you're gonna have to put your skills to the test. Number 3. Ronin, North Star, Tone, Ion, uh, okay, pretty much any time with range and speed. Now a lot of people like to say that Scorch is a counter to Ronin, and on paper I suppose it makes sense. Both Ronin and Scorch are close range titans, but Scorch pops off more in those ranges due to his ability to stack damage with his flames and shield, not to mention his higher health pool. However, most people fail to realize that this counter is entirely dependent on if the enemy Ronin is just straight up lobotomized. Like of course Ronin isn't going to win a straight 1v1 with most titans just because his sustained damage output and lower health pool means he isn't going to last long in direct combat. So you know, that's why good Ronin's flank? As a Scorch, you're basically a big fat walking target. Your slow speed ensures that by the time he can turn around to actually face the Ronin shooting you, he'll have already unloaded his entire payload and vanished without a trace. With the Ronin's speed and phase dash, he can roleplay as a mosquito and whittle down your health until it eventually reaches zero. Now of course, it isn't a completely one-sided matchup as Scorch has the tools to prevent a Ronin from ever approaching him, but you have to remain very vigilant. On the bright side, the mere existence of your flame shield means that Ronin can't use his sword core on you without dying a horrible death. Now, I won't get into the specifics of every other titan, but pretty much anything that's long range and fast is gonna suck. For example, North Star's Railgun, Ion's Laser Shot, and especially Monarch's Arc Rounds.
When it comes to kits, Scorch's selection is pretty... underwhelming, I guess? So you know what, I'll start with the worst and make my way to the top. Number 1, Feel for the Fire. With this kit, now you can unleash your powerful firewall a whole... Two yeah. seconds earlier! Wow. Wow. wow! Okay, seriously, two seconds? Not three, four, or five, but two seconds? Unless you're spamming firewall on cooldown, you're not gonna feel a difference. Besides, the firewall isn't even that strong by itself. If I were respawn, I would've just given it a second charge like Ronin's Thunderstorm kit. Number two, Scorched Earth. On paper, this kit sounds great. Unfortunately, we can't have nice things, and the thermite that's left behind only lasts for like, uh, one second. This kit would be a lot better if the thermite lasted for at least maybe three seconds, but at only one second, it makes the damage pretty negligible. This kit is also dependent on the fact that you even managed to hit your core in the first place. Number three, tempered plating. From here on out, the kits become like 10 times better. Tempered plating is great, because it eliminates the threat of your own thermite and also makes you less vulnerable in general due to you being immune to crits now. So here's my hot take. Tempered plating is for... bad players. Okay, before you start hating on me, let me explain why. When people choose tempered plating, they're usually lured in by the fact that they're immune to their own fire. But in my opinion, this leads to a non-optimal playstyle of trying to chase your opponents through your fire. Scorch is slow. Just because you can walk through your own fire now, doesn't mean that you're And you might say, Well, there's so many scenarios where my own fire gets in my way, and I keep damaging myself. To that I say... a... Uh, skill issue? Like, I'm being legitimately serious. If burning yourself is that big of an issue, maybe you should start practicing more and take note of your bad habits. This actually leads me to my next point. If you're completely new to Scorch, then I believe this is probably the best kit to use as you'll probably be making a lot of mistakes in the beginning. But as you grow and mature as a Scorch player, I believe that in terms of efficiency, the next two kits will be a lot better. Number 4, Inferno Shield. Now the next kits I'm about to cover are generally regarded as Scorch's best kits as they each empower Scorch's most useful tools in his arsenal. Inferno Shield empowers his regular shield by increasing its duration by 50% and damage by about 20%. With this, you can now punish enemy titans even more harshly than ever before if they get too close. And even if you can't get any use out of the damage, having the shield more readily available to melt oncoming damage is really strong. In the past, I believe Inferno Shield was the best titan kit and depending on your playstyle, this is probably still true. But I believe in most scenarios, this next kit takes the cake. Number 5, Wildfire Launcher. If you remember what I said earlier in the video, Scorch is just a mildly obese North Star? Therefore, the kit that increases the damage of the Thermite Launcher is kind of a no-brainer for me. But why would I choose this over the Inferno Shield? Well, the short answer is reliability. While the Inferno Shield helps significantly with ambushing slower titans at corners like Legion and other Scorches, or Atlases that have spent their dash, what about the times you can't do that? <laughs> The ultimate counter to Scorch is being far away. This obviously extends to his Thermal Shield as well, because if you're not close enough to an enemy, the only thing you're really benefiting from is the increased duration. And honestly, at least when I play Scorch, the increased duration of the shield doesn't really come into play as much as you think it would. With a Wildfire Launcher though, you can make Scorch's primary more consistent and lethal at ranges. In terms of warding enemies away, it pretty much has the same effect as a shield now. Except now, you don't have to be in somebody's face. Ultimately though, I believe the choice between Wildfire Launcher and Inferno Shield all comes down to the map you're playing on and the playstyle you choose to use. So now let's discuss some tips and tricks for good old Papa Scorch. Remember, if you want the chance to get featured in this section of the video, make sure you keep an eye out on my community tab where I'll post a thread where you can input your own tips and tricks. Number 1, Reload Cancel. This first tip comes from Pangoon. I feel as a Scorch player, this tip is absolutely vital to know. One of Scorch's biggest weaknesses is the amount of downtime he has due to reloading his Thermite Launcher. This tech helps mitigate that downside quite noticeably. After you fire your initial shot, keep an eye on your ammo counter. As soon as it turns from 0 to 1, that's when you quickly put up your Flame Shield, thus cancelling the rest of the reload animation. Number 2, Adapt to the Situation. Now this tip does sound kind of like a general take. However, I think this really does weigh heavily on Scorch. As debatably the weakest titan in the game, you have to make sure your game sense and awareness are at an all-time high. With Scorch's kit, you have the potential to be a damage stacking behemoth or an immovable object. The key is understanding when you can go full aggro or when you should just stay back and take your time. 
Honestly, just think of yourself as a big fat ronin and play with the opportunistic mindset. Number 3. Thermite Predictability This next tip comes from Leslie Donovan. If you can't get an angle on your gas trap in an incline or above you, then shoot a surface above it or above a player. Because then, the sparks will fall due to gravity and burn them or ignite the trap. Let me tell you, some people think the only way to kill a pilot is if you hit them with a direct hit, and thus, they completely ignore the fact that they can utilize the pools of thermite as a result. The projectile you launch also has projectiles of its own, so don't be afraid to get creative if there's something you can't directly hit. Number 4. Aim for the feet Now, this tip is pretty self-explanatory, but why should we aim for the feet? Well, for starters, it allows the thermite to touch the floor faster, which in turn makes the damage more consistent. It also allows for the thermite pools to easily connect and trail the target if they move forward. Number 5. Don't let your enemies escape. This final tip comes from Gordon Blub. If you want to ascend to the highest being as a Scorch player, you have to utilize everything in your kit. Cut off escape routes. Get in their face. Show them the true meaning of fear. Oh, and for Flame Core and Firewall, they can travel over walls given if you're close enough to said wall. And yeah, that's basically Scorch. If you're a fellow war crime enjoyer, feel free to comment any extra tips and tricks down below. I also want to thank you guys for getting me to over 5,000 subscribers! And now, I've got a couple announcements to make. First of all, if you're a fellow Timefall 2 PlayStation player, then come on and join my network, Reach its Comrades. On that note, if you haven't noticed already, I have started streaming, so if you have the time, come and say hi. If you want updates on what I'm currently doing, or plan on doing, keep an eye on my community tab where I'll post polls and different threads. If you want a little something extra, feel free to support me through memberships on YouTube. And as always, I appreciate you guys for sticking around, and I'll see y'all in the next one.